How does Stripe make this awesome morphing menu animation? I'll show you how to recreate this in React with just a few lines of logic, and we'll use AI to generate all of the markup, and the end result will be exactly what you see here. Let's start with a blank React app, and let's use AI to take it from this to this with almost no work. I'm going to start with these mockups in Figma that I'll share at the end, and I'm gonna use AI to convert this to code using the builder.io Figma plugin. I hit generate code, Builder will launch, the AI will make this design nice and responsive, and the AI will stream out my code in the framework and CSS library of my choice. In this case, I did React and Tailwind. I'll copy it, and I pasted that into my code base, and I called it the Stripe Hero Components. And now we'll take my ugly Hello World page, and instead I will import Stripe Hero, save, and beautiful. That's a much nicer starting point. Now I'm going to take out the links here and make it their own component because that's where our logic will live. So back in our Stripe Hero, I'm gonna copy this nav section with all the links. I now pasted it into its own nav components and back over in my hero, I'm just gonna import nav and great. Now that we didn't have to waste time generating all that basic markup, let's plug in the logic and make those nice interactions. Going back to Stripe for a second, looking at this animation, there's really only three things we need to track. We need to know what are we hovering? I'll store that as a number. We need to know the offset left, as in how far left or right this menu needs to sit. And notice when I change to different menu items, the menu wrapper itself resizes its height to match the contents. So we're going to need to store the height as well. So over in our nav component, let's add these. So we're gonna track what we're hovering. We'll make that a number or null. We're going to track the left value of how far over on the screen this menu should live, and we're going to track the height value, each as their own piece of state. Now let's hook this up. On mouse enter, we're gonna to want to set hovering to be the index of whatever link I just entered my mouse into. So we'll call the first link zero, we'll call this link one, and so on and so forth. Now when we're hovering, let's have a popover show. At the bottom of this component, I'll just say hovering, and I'm gonna find a div with some styling. Position absolutes, a white background in Tailwind, a shadow, etc. Now, when I hover, I see this little overlay. That looks good, but it's not hiding when I mouse away. So let's go to our nav, let's say on mouse leave, and we're gonna set hovering to null. So now it's there, it's gone, progress. Now let's make it so that when I move to different links, the popover shifts left and right. To do that, I need to set this popover left value. What I'll do is on each mouse enter, I'll grab the event, then I'll set the popover left to the event current target offset left. That's gonna be the left side of where this link lives on the page. I can add that to my others. Don't worry, we will refactor this later. And we'll set this as a style property on the popover itself. There we go. Now you can see as I move my mouse, the popover is following me. Progress. Now the next thing we need is something to live inside of this popover. I'm gonna go back to Figma and I'll take each of these menu slides and import them with Builder again. Now we've got it in Builder and we're streaming the code with the AI. I'm going to now copy the code. And over in VS Code, I made these different menu 0, 1, 2, and 3 components. For each of them, I pasted the markup that was generated from the Figma import. And I also added a forward ref here. I'll show you in a minute why this matters, but using React forward ref allows us to use this menu components and still provide a reference to the underlying DOM element, which we'll need to calculate the height for our menu transitions. Back over in our nav component, inside of our popover, we can add some logic to display the correct menu based on what's hovering. Here, I added a check for hovering and show the correct menu. This isn't the prettiest way to do that, but we're gonna refactor this later. Now in our React app, this is looking pretty nice. And now for the fun part, we get to add the transitions. The trick here is actually, we're going to end up rendering all of the menu items at once. They're going to be position absolutes. And we're gonna animate which one is in view based on what link we're hovering. The first thing we'll do is start wrapping these in position absolute. And let's start by animating the opacity of which one should be in view. I'm gonna use a handy utility called CLSX that makes it a lot easier to dynamically add and remove classes and react. And here I'm gonna say if hovering is zero, we want opacity 100, otherwise we want opacity zero. And let's also add a transition opacity here. I'm gonna apply that to each of these layers and we're gonna refactor this in a moment. Now in our React app, we've got a fading transition, but there's something wrong here. 
because each menu is position absolute, it's overflowing the container and the popover is not capturing the right height. So now back in our nav component, we need to set this popover height. This is a good time to recognize that our mouse enter listeners are quite redundant. So let's refactor this. I'm gonna create a mouse enter function that takes an index and an element. We're gonna set hovering to the index, set the popover left to the element offset left. Then we'll add our popover height logic. So now each of these can be on mouse enter, zero event target, one event target, you get the idea. But to get the popover height, we need to know the inner contents height. So that's where we need one more piece. We need to keep track of the different references of the different menus. So I'm gonna use a React use ref and we'll have inside it an array of HTML elements or null. With this array, we'll keep track of an index and an element reference for each of those menus. So down below, now that we added the forward ref you saw earlier, the reference here is the root DOM element of the menu contents, and we can set refs.current and the index to the elements. We'll do that for each element here. And now the menu elements, we can look up from our refs array by index. If menu element exists, we're gonna set the popover height to the element's offset height, as in the height of the element when rendered. Now let's add the height here. And look at that, our animations look pretty good, but there's one more critical piece. Each of the inner elements, we're gonna fade left and right. So it looks like each one is morphing into the next instead of just fading. We're gonna add some logic here to transform the menus left if it's before the current, centered if it is current, and right if it's after the current. But first, let's refactor this because this logic is getting redundant. I'm going to bring this into a new slide wrapper component where we pass in the index as a prop, which is being hovered, and we'll take children so that we can render the insides provided. I can now clean up the menu code to look a lot cleaner and repeat ourselves a lot less. And now we're gonna use the transform CSS properties translate X to shift our menu items left and right in a performant and GPU accelerated way. But first I'm gonna say if the hovering item is the current item, we apply no transforms, it's centered. If the hovering item is larger or later than the current item, we'll use Tailwind to shift us left a bit. Otherwise we're gonna shift right a bit. Now when I hover around, we get this really cool morphing animation where one menu seems to slide and morph into the next. It's almost as if the menus stayed static and our popover is just shifting around, changing what we can see behind it. Let's do a little cleanup too and make sure when any menu is hidden, we give it pointer events none, so nothing is clickable. And lastly, right now, the first item doesn't fade in. So let's change this to be an animation. So instead of this rendering only when we're hovering something, I'm going to refactor this a bit and use CLSX plus Tailwind to detect when we're hovering and transition us in, otherwise be hidden. And now when the menu comes in, we have a nice animation as well as when we pan around and we can click on anything inside as well. With this technique, you can make any type of dynamic fading menus and whatever sits inside, this will perfectly fit to it. You can see a more detailed walkthrough of what I just showed, including the code snippets and the Figma designs you can convert to code in your favorite framework and CSS library yourself in my latest blog post on the builder.io blog. Also, I wanna make more of these breakdowns showing you how cool things you see on the web are made. So if there's interesting sites that have cool interactions or animations or other effects, let me know in the comments and I might make a video on it.